Have you ever wondered what goes into writing a script from start to finish? What secrets lie behind the pages of your favorite film or TV show? Well, <laughs> boom! Today's lesson will be how I write my screenplay, my step-by-step -step writing process is explained. If you've watched the playlist, you have see there is a video dedicated to each specific step. This video contains the entire process however i will not go over each step in great detail you could always watch the videos that are associated with it but i will give a quick overview of each step and uh, here's a quick resource of it now uh why is it important though thomas oh that's a good question uh understanding a structured writing process helps uh, demystify the path from initial concept to filmed work providing a roadmap for aspiring writers. Now, keep in mind, my process may not work for you, but it is a process because every writer has their own process, but sometimes it's good to listen to other ideas and maybe you go, let me switch things up. Let me try something new. There's no such thing as too much information. Uh, however, you do have to eliminate things and figure out what works for you specifically. But what is a writing process? Well, the writing process involves it involves multiple stages, including brainstorming, outlining, drafting, revising, and editing, tailored to ensure that every element of the story is compelling and well-crafted. Now, before we ever uh, get into uh, things, when I show you the list, I'm going to give you four tips and tricks, okay? Um because that's what I like to do. But as with my other videos on my writing process for uh, manuscripts uh, as a novelist, uh, the following also applies uh, with these particular uh, tips. So tip one of four, importance of a personalized writing process. Individual process preferences are so important to keep in mind. You know, you want to emphasize that writing, uh, you know, you when you when you're focused on it you you need to emphasize or or more importantly i should be uh, emphasizing what works best for you. you you can't just be like whatever so really take the time and think about what process what steps what element really works for you there are some writers i know that'll do 10 15 even 20 drafts i mean if you think of uh uh menace in society while drinking gin and juice they you know don't be a menace in society while drinking with the wayans brothers you know uh they wrote 26 drafts before they even filmed anything and then there was another draft written you know before they got it right so just because my my process is one way doesn't mean it's the only process okay uh but you should also feel empowered to figure out what does work for you. Like, be confident in that. If, if something doesn't work for you, it's okay not to do that. And it's okay that this writer is doing it. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it is a learning process in itself. You have to try things and uh, see where it goes, you know. Number two, flexibility in the writing process. Adaptability is key. Uh, you may say, hey, this is working, but maybe you're not hitting deadlines. Or you may say this is working, but maybe you're not being able to get things out or you're finding yourself kind of uh, floating in the water, as one might say. And you're like, how do I fix this up? Well, that's where other steps come in. That's where uh, doing the research and finding steps like this might help you knock the brain into thought processes. But at the same time, just because you learn one of the steps from somebody else, doesn't mean you have to do it exactly like it. It's sort of like with success. When I talk people, when I tell people, uh, you got a network market practice. Networking is very general. Marketing is general and practicing is general. Um, but in networking, there's so many different things you could do. You could just network through social media. You can network through the phone. You can network in person. You can network on set. You can network, whatever the case may be. Networking is the thing you have to do. But the the uh, pr the way you go about it, that's the variable that you're in control of. And the same thing with having that flexibility in your writing process. As you learn, as you adjust, just because you choose to try something doesn't mean you have to do it exactly as it is. Okay, because if, if your results are not yielding what you want, you, you got to change things up. Number three, embracing personal growth over comparison. The thing is, uh, 
your job as a writer is to find a, a, a place of Zen, you know, a, a place of happiness. Like, are you enjoying writing? You know, is it, or is it like, is it just so struggle? It's such a struggle for you. Or you're just like, this is terrible. The thing is, if you're not enjoying yourself, change things up. If you are enjoying yourself, why change? You know, just keep doing what you're doing. If you're happy, it takes you a long time to do something. Or if you're happy where, you know, you got to do extra steps to get to where you're satisfied. There is nothing wrong with that. That is that is chef's kiss because it works for you. You know, uh, but more importantly, the reason you should embrace that kind of mentality is because the way I do it or the way they do it or the way this person does it or, the, you know, you, we're not all Quentin Tarantino, right? So we are not trying to write better than them. We are not trying to emulate them in the sense of like, well, if I'm not as good as them or if I'm not where they are, then am I even good? No. Compete against yourself. Be better than you were yesterday. That's the only person you have to be better than. Because you're creating a voice, you're creating a space in which you provide something very specific to you, your perspective, your soul, your passion. Um, so I wouldn't say ignore other people because you could always learn from things, but you but you're not trying you don't have to worry about being better than them or being them in general, but more importantly, uh, you know, it's the more people you surround yourself with, the more we start building and getting influenced with their habits or ideas. Uh, we get to cultivate the concepts. I'm just saying. Just saying. All right. Number four. Assessing the effectiveness of your writing process. Now, for me, I am constantly refining my process, not just my writing process, but uh, but the way I attack each specific step. The process I'm going to go over today is one that I have come to terms with, um, but that doesn't mean it won't change. If you've watched the writing How I Write My Novel video, you know that uh, the original playlist is based on the steps that I did. Uh, and then by the time I finished that playlist, because it was like a year and a half later, two years later, uh, uh, I had a like I'm doing this video. I had a full list of uh, things that were adjusted. I added steps. Uh, so forth and so on. So always evaluate your process. Is it effective for you? You know, you got to change things up. All right. Before we get into the walkthrough of the 13 step process, the 13 step process. <laughs> All right. I know I'm I'm kind of wacky, but anyway, uh, with that wackiness comes the subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Is, you know what I'm saying? Gotta 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 keep the channel going, right? All right, so let's do it. Boom! The 13 step process. Boop. Where am I? My face is covered. No. Oh. Beep. I redacted it. You can't know it. You you are forbidden. Now, uh, just so you know, this process is uh, streamlined compared to my process for writing a manuscript when I'm writing a novel. But I'll say this much. My outlining process is basically the same for all story ideas and how I approach writing uh, a script is only different uh, for several reasons. One, you don't always need a script and a treatment uh, um, or more. Or less, you don't always need a script to get into the door. All you need is a treatment. Uh, and two, there is prep in the back end that will help with setting up a pitch deck and sales pitch on the front end. So uh, when working with a script, believe it or not, uh, scripts are good. Spec scripts are good for like selling your services as a writer. Um, but when you're trying to get pro, if you're trying to sell projects or ideas, getting in that room, really a treatment is a, a solid log line. Very important. Um, but a treatment because you want people to pay you to write your script. Uh, this also kind of is true with, with certain novels. You could go for a nonfiction. Uh, you could have a, a, a pitch for a nonfiction book. And depending on the relationships you have with the people, uh, the publishers or the agents, and also maybe your, uh, your, your brand, you know, your, your following, you can go in with some pitch ideas and then they pay you in thirds or fourths, depending, and uh, to write the book. Um, so you don't always need a full manuscript for that. Uh, there are some cases where that could happen with uh, with fiction, but um, it's neither here nor there. This is for screenwriting. So let's get into it. 
What is the first step? That's a great question. Of course you see it on the, you see it, crafting a log line. A log line is a one sentence summary of a screenplay that captures its main plot, characters, and conflict. Uh, really, you want to focus on the core elements, uh, which is basically a, a log line should, it should highlight the central conflict uh, or central plot. Uh, the main characters, and then the primary conflict. I'll repeat that. A log line should highlight the central plot, the main character or characters, and the primary conflict. Now, a good log line is typically no more than a sentence long. Uh, it, it should be clear, concise, and engaging. Doesn't mean it can't be two sentences long, but uh, yeah, I'm just saying. All right. Number two, as you can see on the screen, boom, right. A treatment. Uh, to clarify, a treatment is a detailed outline of a screenplay that provides a comprehensive overview of the plot, character, and major events. That's right. Uh, ultimately, the log line expands. I should say, ultimately, the treatment expands on the log line uh, because the treatment will allow you to delve deeper into the story uh, than a log line will. Log line is like piques a person's interest, but a treatment provides more specific details about the plot, characters, and key scenes. Uh, a treatment often includes a scene by scene breakdown of the plot. Uh, uh, it's usually helpful to visualize the flow of the story and identify potential pacing issues. If it doesn't do a scene by scene, for example, if you do a, a film, you could just sort of do like the acts or the plot points. If you follow the 27 plot point structure, that still works. Too. All right. So, uh, I have videos on all these, by the way, if you want to take a look, see, and see how to break down number three, there you go. Develop. Whoa, whatever. Oh, that. <laughs> All right. Develop your characters, they say. If you don't know what developing characters is, it's all about uh, creating well rounded, believable characters with distinct personalities and motivations uh, through their arcs, right? Because a character is more than their hair color, they're more than their gender, they're more than their beliefs as a, as a faith, and they're more than uh, their job. There are complications that live deep inside them. Always work inside out. Don't work outside in. For depth, fill the inside up, and then you can dress them up however you want. You could dress up emotions however you want. You could dress up uh, motivations however you want. And more importantly, as you develop character arcs, you'll discover who a character is. And then once you start getting the dialogue down, you might even discover a little bit more. But ultimately... Character development is best achieved through actions, dialogue, and interactions with other characters. That's really where you discover who the characters are. You you can spend weeks, if not months, just writing down like, yeah, they like the color blue. They enjoy apples. Their dad was six foot three. Like you could do that, <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that. Even though I did the funny voice, like, oh, uh, but you truly discover your character as they're making choices. Uh, but the more you understand about their insides, their motivations, and the more you understand about like why they care about something or what they're trying to accomplish, uh, their choices become more uh, intuitive for you as the writer. Step four. Plot and outline. All right, plot and outline. Again, I have tons of videos on how to outline and how to plot uh, from live videos to an entire playlist dedicated to it. Plot and outline refer to the planning and structuring of a screenplay, including the sequence of events, character development, and overall narrative arc. Now, create, you have to create a strong plot, right? So a well-structured structured plot uh, usually has a clear beginning, middle, and end with a rising action, a climax, <laughs> and falling action. Uh all narratives, doesn't matter what you're writing. They have the ordinary world that kind of sets the tone. Who are these people? Establishes the characters. And then there's an inciting incident that disrupts that. And then there's a call to action, no matter what. Doesn't matter if it's a romance or not. Uh, then there's, you know, the rise, the rising action to the midpoint conflict. There's always a midpoint conflict that reveals the truth of the lie. And then it leads to the reversal. And then ultimately, there's the, uh, you know, 
what's the solution to the problem or the, or the truth or the lie that we discovered. And that's the second half of your second act. And then ultimately, when you get to the third act, you have to uh, you have the final battle, whether it's internal, external or they lose or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, there has to be a resolution. Uh, and if it's like a romance, there's always a happily ever after. Okay. Num, num, number five. Oh, look at that. Write a voice draft. This is usually where people start. They start with a draft. I like to go, I like to start with the little details uh, just because it helps me discover who everything is. But once the, the first draft is uh, your initial screenplay, this is where you just get stuff on the page. You just throw it on the page. You know, if you have the outline, you're just following the outline and getting those scenes. If you don't have an outline and you're writing intuitively, uh, just uh, get it out. Don't worry about the crazy stuff. This is the first draft. Try things. Push back on ideas. As uh, Stephen King says, not that I'm a huge fan of Stephen King, but a writer is a writer, right? And uh, he has some great advice when it comes to sometimes just throw a monster in the room or the corner. It's a proverbial monster. It doesn't have to necessarily be a real monster. It just means give them a problem. Uh, that as a developmental editor, one of the things I run into is a lot of things are happening, but nothing is happening. And it's because they're moving through a scene because the plot dictates. So, uh, it must be so, um, and, uh, as, uh, as the creators of South Park say, you know, if it's, uh, this happens, then this, then this happens. And then this happens, that's where things are happening, but nothing is happening. It's just the course of the plot. It should be, this happens. And therefore, this happens, but because this happened, this happens. So it creates a cause and effect, right? You also have the but end, right? Or, uh, you know, uh, you know, hey, this happened, but now, now this happened, right? And this happens, right? So, so look at your scenes, and uh, if it feels smooth and there's no tension, there's no conflict, there's no nothing. Just be like, well, what, what can I make the complication be? It's okay because it doesn't have to be that way. That's the that's the great part about creative writing is just because you write it doesn't mean, oh, I wrote this sentence where uh, a mummy appears in a room and it makes no sense for the genre, but because I wrote it, I can't change it. That's not what writing is. Writing is going, let's see what happens if I throw a mummy in there. You know what? Let's make the mummy an actual mummy. <laughs> and they're a mummy. And it's the mummy of the character. So they're like, oh, my God, I haven't seen my mummy in a long time. And then you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense because I'm writing. I'm writing a romance. Um, right. So just try things. It's OK to just try things because you, you, you'd you be surprised when you play in that little garden to see what happens. OK. But anyway, just get it out in the first draft. Ooh! Now, after your first draft is done, I always recommend taking a break, uh, you know, and uh, and getting getting uh, with fresh eyes because it, it it really helps with way it helps with improving your script. Okay, uh, and what do you what do I mean by that? Well, ultimately, if you step away, you lose the bias. You start creating the opportunity to look at it with fresh eyes, but also you're not deeply invested in the process up to that point. You have that break. And when you come back, now you get to read it and it's almost as if you're experiencing it again. Um, you know, and this allows you to look at certain things, especially when you read it out loud or if you, uh, you know, you have a friend come in that you trust, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You, the, the point is to take a break. All right. Number seven. Ta -da. Rewrite. So based, based on how you read through, uh, when you come back, after you take your break, you're going to read through and you're going to rewrite. You're going to you don't have to rewrite from scratch. You just go through and you rework scenes. All right. This is where you revise the uh, the version of screenplay. By the way, you can rewrite the script. There are some people. Um, I think Tika. Uh, Tika. What? Uh, I don't know why I can't say it, but Waitiki, uh, Ragnarok and stuff like that and the, what they do in the shadows. Uh, he says that he writes scripts and then he like leaves it alone for like a year and then he comes back and then he just, he like reads it again, whatever. And then like he'll rewrite it and whatever he remembers is the things he works with because he's like, oh, maybe that was the good stuff, right? So you could do that too. But uh, ultimately a second draft is where you take what you have and you just work it. You work the scenes, uh, you incorporate some uh, personal feedback like that. You like, I like this. I don't like that. Or, Oh, that kind of seems weird. 
right? And uh, this is an opportunity to address uh, some of your fears or your worries or your concerns and, uh, you know, add a little bit of some, 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 you know, <clears throat> more importantly, this is where, uh, you kind of work your dialogue because you may have discovered the characters by the end of this first draft. And you noticed that when you did your read back after you took that break, you're like, Oh, this character feels a little different. Let me try to keep that fluid because we develop scenes as we write. So, we start developing characters and we're like, oh, let's go back and keep some energy going or let's let's kind of seed their personality a little bit. So it makes sense when they come here. Now, this is one of my favorite parts. Read through uh, with another writer or two and take notes. So this is where you get like your friends that can write uh, that you trust and you kind of read through the script together. And uh, while you're doing that, uh, you're taking notes, you know, maybe you're listening to them or whatever. You're just reading it all together at the same time. You could also uh, have them read privately and then come together and talk about the notes or you could come together and read it and then talk about notes. But working with other writers helps you identify areas with the script that might not uh, be clear to you because you do still have the bias of knowing the end, the result, And when somebody's reading something where they don't know what's going to happen, it, it allows them to see certain things and they start kind of picking apart stuff that doesn't make sense or, or make sense. I had this really great note for something where uh, there's like this big battle going on. And uh, one of the, one of my readers was like, why, why are none of the soldiers going? No, nah, we're done. We under you officers. I get, because you, you're officers and this is your this is your life is your officers in the army. But uh, everyone's being killed by these people. Uh, we're done. I'm going to go get a beer. And I was like, that's so true. Like they're taking so much damage and they're just like, you know, going in. So I added that kind of scene to the moment where like a soldier's like, hold up. And then I made the soldiers scared. And then I had to give the soldiers a reason to keep fighting. And that created a nice little moment, you know, so it's always good to have other writers uh, come in because even though we're amazing, awesome, and unique, eh, so is everyone else. And it's good to sort of uh, hear their thoughts. Again, that doesn't mean you have to take it, but it is. I, I highly recommend at least listening. Ooh, rewrite third draft. OK, so now you take all the notes that you got from your writer friends as you read through it. And then ultimately, it's just the rewrite. You go through, it's not just, let's get rid of the word just, that's so unfair. It's a rewrite. You take the information, you go through, and this is an opportunity to further refine your plot, kind of get your characters a little right, add things here and there, maybe take a scene out, maybe add a scene, maybe adjust the scene, maybe change the scene, whatever the case may be. Use those notes. All right. What are we on, 10? Ooh, this part's fun. Eh. Wait. Eh. Eh. Oh, all right. Table read and take notes from uh, the readers and what you hear. Now, this is very simple. You, you get a table read. You get a couple actors together uh, or or writers and actors you could, or friends. Doesn't matter. It's just people reading uh, the script and you're listening and taking notes and then asking questions. Uh, ultimately, a table read is a rehearsal where the script is read out loud by actors allow or, or writers, allowing you to hear the dialogue in context and identify potential issues. Now, to clarify, <coughs> number eight, this isn't necessarily listening to the script. You, you guys don't have to read it out loud. You can. You can read scenes out. You can work out scenes. You could act out scenes. You could kind of, you know. It's it's more analytical in that in step eight. It's where writers are really going. All right, this is uh, fundamentally, uh, you know, this is what I'm looking for. This is you should be at a point where characters are sort of alive on this on the page, and you now finally get to hear those characters being presented or represented, uh, and it opens up the door a little bit. So there is a big difference between eight and ten. Eight is more analytical and like you're really fine tuning things with other writers that have the same like have a analytical brain like that. And ten is more or less uh, you're you're dealing with more actors or writers that are just there to sort of let you hear it play out. You're listening to pace. You're listening to rhythm. You're listening to see if uh, certain dialogue hits, you know, especially if there's jokes, you know, are they too jokey or are they et cetera, et cetera. And then once you have those notes, we go to the fourth draft, which is another rewrite. 
This is where this is a polished draft. This is where you take all the table read stuff and you go, you know what? I'm just gonna all right. At this point, do not rewrite anything. You can, but if you rewrite, then you gotta kind of start the process over. Like if you rewrite this whole script or you add new scenes or you take scenes away, then I would go back to uh eight and start from there. So after you if you rewrite, if you ever rewrite the script, okay. Uh uh, but you know it's re it's a rewrite from all this work you've done. Go back to eight, and then uh, move forward. But the fourth draft is really about polishing it up. Uh, you know, you're incorporating some feedback from the table read, but ultimately there should be fine adjustments, maybe some dialogue rehauls. But ultimately the scenes are there. You know what I'm saying? All right. After that, we do one more table read, and this is this is this is an exciting one. So this is where you get a little audience together, uh, small or large, it really doesn't matter. And uh, you take notes from both the readers and the audience on what they hear. This is where you allow actors uh, to take the, the script home, read, memorize, learn it. But then they're going to still do a table read. They're not going to perform, per se. On, they're not going to be choreography or, or stage direction. They're just going to sit at the table uh, on a stage or, or wherever. You know, you could do it in like a theater area or, or a room. And they're going to perform. They're going to understand the emotions because they did their work. They should have done their work. Uh, and then now audiences get to see the emotional truth of the thing. And then from there, you should be taking notes. You should definitely be filming it. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you should ask the audience what they thought. And then afterwards, ask the uh, readers what they thought. Okay. And then finally, with that, you do the final fifth draft. Now, remember... Uh, I'm saying final fifth draft because by now it should be like, all right, I'm ready to polish this up. I'm ready to put it in. I got really great feedback. Now, obviously, if you haven't been getting great feedback or people are still confused and it's just not working, you're going to do a rewrite. You don't have to rewrite the entire thing, but you could start doing whatever you have to do. And then you go back to number eight. Always go back to eight. once you pass eight. Anytime you have to rewrite something or add something, you always go back to eight and you just keep repeating eight to 13 until the script is solid all right there you go Boo! question what part of the writing process do you find most challenging and why what strategies have you found helpful let me know in the comments blue all right okay what's next what's next i don't know let's see subscribe subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful please like share subscribe comment etc etc remember uh i'm gonna start trying to do live videos back again on saturday i've mentioned that a couple times uh i just i don't know if you know i've been sick uh i have restrictive lung disease now because for some reason <laughs> why not <laughs> final thoughts I said this uh, in uh, the other video. Writing is a deeply personal journey, okay? Every uh, writer, each writer's path is unique, marked by individual challenges, successes, and learning curves. Your goal should be... <laughs> I did the Italiano thing. Uh, your goal should be to find what process works best for you and recognize that it's a reflection of your own creative rhythm, not a measure against anyone else's success. Your process should evolve over time as you learn more and more about what works for you. As you grow in your craft, you, your needs will also increase. Your preferences will increase, will change, and the skills that you uh, hold will change. And so, too, should your approach to writing. So be open to this evolution. Be open to change. Be malleable. Malleable is a very powerful word especially in the screenwriting world. All right. Writing has a reward that will be there at the end of your challenges. So, you know, practice self-compassion. Some days you might exceed your own expectations, while other days writing may feel laborious. Labor <laughs> laborious. Wow. Both are part of the process, and both offer valuable opportunities for growth, success, and struggle. Learn to adjust. Learn to adapt. 
as I believe so in the video about my writing process for manuscripts when writing novels, use the idea of comparing yourself only to who you were yesterday as a benchmark for progress today, tomorrow, and so forth. This mindset encourages continual growth and helps keep the inevitable frustrations of writing in perspective. You have to celebrate your small victories and learn from the setbacks. When it does come to the feedback stage of your writing journey, incorporate feedback wisely and be willing to adapt. Feedback from table reads, audiences, or writing peers is invaluable, but it is most effective when used to refine a process that already feels true to your style and goals. Adapt suggestions in ways that enhance rather than dilute your unique voice and method. That means if they say, I wish your characters were funnier, and you're like, I'm not writing a comedy, it's okay not to listen. You'll know you found or are close to finding your ideal writing process when writing feels more like a flow than a struggle. When you look forward to your writing process and your writing sessions, uh, when and eventually when you see consistent improvement in the quality of work, then you know what you are doing is right for you. If your current process regularly brings frustration or blocks, uh, or blocks you, gives you writer's block, consider what changes might bring more joy and productivity. Now, stay engaged with the broader writing community to learn about different processes and techniques. Workshops, writing groups, and books on writing can offer insight and inspire change that might suit your evolving needs. It's okay to keep learning. It's okay to keep discovering. So keep exploring, adjust, and write. Which eat with each word, sentence, and draft, you are not just creating stories, but also forging your path as a writer. Each step, no matter how small, is part of your journey towards mastering your craft. All right. Next video in the series. For now, this video is the final video in this series on the steps to writing a novel. As I develop as a writer and continue to learn, uh, as we all should be doing, uh, I'll come back and add more videos to this playlist. This playlist has 14 videos, that's counting this one, that go over each individual step of the previous process I had developed. I might make individual videos going over some of the newer steps individually, we'll see, uh, but ultimately, there you go. Playlist to get your screenplay written. All right. Do, 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 do. As always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.